right, hello everyone. Um, what do you think is the biggest challenge when developing a data platform for a bank? And how do you deploy data capabilities across users and how do you govern data sharing between those users? Welcome, my name is Stefan Groot. I'm head of analytics and AI platforms and together with me is Joey Radstaat, product owner of data integration services. In the coming 30 minutes or so, we're going to talk you through our biggest challenge which is building a data platform in a highly regulated industry with a lot of controls, a lot of compliance um, that we have to build in our platform. Uh, there is some time uh, at the end for questions. Um, I think that's the nicest part of the whole presentation, to be honest. All right, <clears throat> we're going to share our experience uh, based, of, based on six years of experience on the public cloud. In our case, that's Azure. That's also the moment when the, the database journey started for us where we deployed um, Azure applications in a, a data mesh approach um, where the different domains could start to work on their new data applications on the cloud. Um, and as I said, in a highly regulated industry, um, and that of course comes also with a lot of challenges. Uh, to give you a little bit of context about the, the skill that we talk about in the bank, uh, we have around 20,000 employees in total. Um, and we are a central platform team that supports 20 data domains and uh, subsidiaries, uh, mainly in Europe. Um, those data domains host, or it's a home of around 700 data developers. We think about data scientists, uh, data engineers, machine engineers. Um, they build data applications and we have around 80 of them. And these 80 applications uh, run on our, our central platform. Yeah, we do it with um, one platform architecture. You can guess probably which one that is, Lakehouse. Um, but we do have two distinctive platforms in place. I'm going to tell you why as well. And we also do that um, with a central platform engineering department. Um, you might guess, um, yeah, as I mentioned, a lot of complexity, a lot of stakeholders to manage. Ima imagine you are the manager or you are part of this central team. You have to satisfy 20 different data domains. They all think they are the most important. Um, and you might recognize some of these statements that, uh, that we face on a daily basis. So most of my, most of my time I'm just spending on escalations, um, explaining to people why it takes time to build and enable certain stuff. Um, and we always too late. It says here we need it tomorrow, but actually they need it yesterday. Um, and what we also often hear is let, yeah, let us do it ourselves. Give us the tools, give us the rights. Uh, we deploy the infrastructure and the whole platform ourselves and then uh, you get rid of us. So people really don't want to have this dependency with a central team. I call it the curse of a platform team. Um, but we didn't give hope the last years and I still believe this is the right approach for data platform engineering. To have a central team in place that takes away the burden of the complexity of building an uh, enterprise grade platform. Um, so apart from the users that we have to support, we also support the CTO. Uh, he's asking questions about, is it secure enough? Uh, why is it getting more expensive? You need to control it. Um, at the same time, we have a chief data officer who's translating the regulatory requirements into our requirements that we have to comply to from a platform perspective. So we always juggle between different types of work, different stakeholders. Um, but I think um, we found a way to do it. Um, actually, we have two solutions to do it. I'm going to explain those in a bit. So first of all, I think one of the successes uh, of our journey is basically that we created a single architecture. A single architecture to provide the necessary capabilities to our users. And the second part I'm going to talk about is how our platform team structure evolved over the last six, six years in order to be able to deliver on those capabilities. So this is more my managerial view on the, on the topic. Uh, Joey will dive a little bit more into detail how we deploy a uh, data platform at scale across these 20 data domains. And then also he will touch upon how data is being shared using Unity Catalog. All right, the first one, moving into a single unified architecture. Um, this is not how we started in the, in the beginning. It took a lot of time for us to get in a state where we reach to have this single architecture. Um, and can, I can tell you it was quite messy in the beginning. We, but we moved to a data mesh approach uh, from the start. So we allowed 
different domains to use our platform and build data applications with a central platform, but that didn't work out in the end how we expected. So we moved into a, a centralized architecture, and yes, we all still have a central data lake in place. It might be a little bit odd and go, go against the data mesh principles, but I'm going to tell you how that works. So this is how it looked like in the beginning, like six, five years ago. We have a central data distribution platform, which basically uh, sources all the golden sources or enterprise data, is doing the checks and balances on top of it and making sure that the data is distributed to the users who are authorized to have access to that data. And they build the domain data applications. And if a new golden source, a new data set is created, it's sent back to this platform and distributed to the rest of the organization again. So this core platform is really critical because this is where all the governance policies, all the lineage metadata comes from that we can show that we, um, we adhere to the, to the regulations and the compliance requirements. This was, in the beginning, the architecture that we um, were striving towards to, but in reality, because of a lot of pressure um, and the data is not available, or so the tools are not available, you see that the domains are requesting to share data directly to each other, just to speed up things. And you also see that data applications are sourcing data from different applications and uh, just to en enable to just to uh, build the use cases they want to do. This was not allowed because this is ungoverned. We couldn't see what was actually happening between sharing of, uh, of uh, data between the teams. So this is something that we try to fix, not by forcing everyone to make use of this central platform and physically move the data there, but we shifted into a new paradigm and try to make the sharing of data governed. And this is how we, what we do with, uh, with Unity Catalog as well, that Joey is going to explain more about. All right, so how did we move into a single architecture then? We started off by asking two basic questions around the two basic needs. So what do users actually need to start with? It's very simple. They need access to tools to work with data, and they need to have access to authorized data. It's as simple as that. So how we, we build this architecture around it is by combining two trends in IT. The Lakehouse platform, you probably have heard about a lot of uh, capabilities that are offered by Databricks, the Unity Catalog, uh, Delta Lake, MLflow. We, uh, we also leverage these capabilities in order to make sure that we uh, provide the tools to our users. Another trend that we combine here is a rel relatively new hype. Um, Gardner is also stating that in the, in the hype cycle nowadays. Recently, Microsoft created a platform engineering guide. Um, if you are in the field of platform engineering, this is a highly recommended guide. It's, uh, it's also applicable for data platform engineering. It gives all the tools and the principles that helps you to scale up uh, from a platform uh, engineering perspective. So how does that look like in more detail at ABN Amro? As I mentioned, we have 20 data domains uh, with data engineers, machining engineers. They build data applications. Th these applications are owned by the domains. The underlying technolo technology is owned by a central team, which is twofold. So we have two platforms to provide the tools or the data. Starting with the tools, we have an analytics platform. It consists of tools, services, frameworks that we combine and integrate together to help a machine learning engineer build machine learning use cases and, and provide the MLOps capabilities. And the same applies for data ops capabilities for analytics and data exploration. So it's a bundle of services and tools that we put together and provide that as a shared, shared service for the uh, users. This is the compute layer. Then we have the storage layer. We call that the enterprise data lake. This is where the actual data lives and is being stored. Now, we have put Unity Catalog in between. So Unity Catalog is positioned in the, in the center of, of our platform and is basically providing the capabilities around data access management, the lineage. So it's the glue between our two platforms in order to make sure that also the data is readily available for the users. So with this setup, we are able to scale up the provisioning of the tools and we are able to quickly provide the data that users actually need. There's one other component that, uh, that I need to mention. Uh, the Unity Catalog is basically the secure 
uh, point of, uh, um, yeah, where we basically put the requirements in place around uh, the regulations and data management. It is connected to a data marketplace. It's an internal portal that we created ourselves. It's basically the front end that data domains can use in order to do the life cycle around, um, around their use cases, request data, register their data sets, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the starting point for us. This is our architecture on a high level. That brings me to the second topic, which is our organization. Our organization is really important in order to deliver on this architecture. Who has heard about Conway's law? Conway's law. Yeah, a few. Conway's law is basically a theory that implies that the solution or a product that an organization is creating is a reflection on the way how the organization is structured and how it communicates. So in other words, if you fail to create a team structure, you also fail on delivery of the architecture. And this is what I really believe. It's also how we experienced that over the last years. And the question is basically around what do you centralize or what do you decentralize in a large organization? So I'm going to show you a few iterations we have been through. Uh, it first starts with the operating model, data versus platform. So you see the three types of work. Uh, first of all, the data activities, so analytics, analysis, data science. Then you have the engineering activities that comes with managing the life cycle of, uh, of data products and data applications. And then platform engineering, which is more the underlying technology and infrastructure. So how we started off five, six years ago is that we had distributed data teams, so they were part of the, of the different data domains in the bank. And we allocated a platform team, or actually a data engineering team, to each and every data team. What happened was that every team was looking into their own technology stack, trying to solve the problems uh, that we face on a daily basis with the, the technology teams, uh, with CISO, with the chief data officer around requirements. So as a result, we ended up having five, six different platforms. And that's not really scalable. Especially not if you look into the scarcity of resources around platform engineers, this model simply did not work for us. Also because we saw that the, the maturity in different teams was also very different. And I also, to be very honest, don't think you need to differentiate on a platform level because the differentiation is more on the data side. You can really make a difference with data as an organization, not really on the technology because it, Technology is already simply there. It's just about the way how you organize yourself in order to implement the technology. So what did we do? We moved into uh, distributed business DevOps teams. We put the business and data engineers together in one team. This is basically a model that De DevOps dictates as a best practice. But we took out the platform engineering activity of every team. We literally took the people out as well, put them together in one team, with the objective to create a standardized platform for, uh, for everyone. It was a quite a painful uh, process, I can tell you, but I really believe that this is very, very worthwhile because we see the speed of delivery that it, that it um, involves. So if, you, if you're starting your journey, especially on, on the cloud, and if you have the opportunity to start in the right model, I propose you to do so because I still feel the pain on a daily basis of the left model because some teams still have some connections or tools in place that are really hard to get rid of. All right, so this is about the operating model, data platform versus data. And this is how we organize ourselves within our platform engineering department. So if you then look at the platform engineering activities, it also consists about different types of work. First of all, we need to support the users in making sure that they use the platform in the right way. We get many questions around those 700 users about how does this work, how does that work? I bump into this issue, can you help me out? A lot of tickets and help requests. At the same time, we are tasked or asked to build capabilities in order to make their lives easier. And at the same time, we have to manage, manage the infrastructure. So you can imagine that the cognitive load, even from a single platform team, is already quite a lot. So we came up with a great idea also, by the way, together with Databricks. And we created a center of expertise on top of these teams. So we basically put the data engineering, machine learning engineering, and database experts together in one team, and we asked them to work together and form a front 
of our department and communicate and help the teams out in order to reach a higher level of maturity. And this is a model that really pays off, but it's really important that you have the right people in this team because they represent the platform, but they also represent the community and they form the bridge between these two. And by having this in place, we also save time from the actual delivery teams and they can focus on actually IT work and building platforms. But this is not the model we work in yet. Uh, so we made a different, uh, we, we made another change because we saw that these delivery teams were working also a little bit in isolation. So it's quite a sp specialism to build MLOps capabilities or data ops capabilities. But the underlying infrastructure is pretty much the same. It all runs on Databricks, on Azure. So what we did, we created another layer and have an infrastructure and reliability engineering team in place right now. It might feel odd and might feel that it goes against the principles of DevOps because we put different layers in place, so more dependencies, but this is, a, this is really a model that, that works in practice. We work in this model around a year right now, and we already see an increase in productivity, an increase in collaboration, an increase in communication. And last but not least, I see there it, it also establishes a continuous improvement mindset. So because we do it together, and we are depending on each other, we're helping each other out in order to improve. So we created basically specialized teams that are forming one team right now in order to deliver the tools and the technology for, for the whole bank. And I'm going to conclude my part of the story by giving you some tips or tricks um, about continuous improvement. We continuously ask ourselves these questions. How might we questions? How might we questions are really a strong method. It's, it's coming from design thinking methodology. If you know it, it's more about product development, but also really helps in creating and establishing an organization. And the presentation I just ma uh, made ar around having one architecture and a team set up, it looks different than every organization, of course, but this is a, an approach that you can take in order to start improving your organization and moving towards the next big thing when it comes to data engineering. And it also led to our next big thing that we are really excited about, but Joey is going to tell more about that. Thank you all. Before we dive into Atlas, the Greek god of data platform, um, I would like to tell a little story. So Stefan just shared that the problems we're trying to solve in our cloud journey and I remember having a conversation with one of our architects and joking around and how many solution engineers do you need to create a solution? So imagine this, a room full of solution engineers working for years on the thing that we knew, the things that we've built already, and asking them to create the next best thing. That was a difficult task, right? Each their own opinion and each it took a very long time. Even so long that I concluded the conversation with my wife on what to have for dinner, or what to watch on TV, long before the first draft of Atlas ever saw the light of day. <laughs> so why am I sharing this? To be able to break through a thought pattern and grasp our minds on what the next best thing might be, a paradigm shift was needed. So how do we provide rapid access to data? Or how do we increase our developers' productivity? How could we deploy faster and improve our security and control? Well, our answer to that is Atlas. And it's a standardized, unified infrastructure architecture. That's a whole mouthful, but allows us to move from a fit-for-purpose platform strategy with fit-for-purpose uh, data applications to a more application agnostic setup with one architecture that enables the entire scope. All right. The new architecture of Atlas, let's see while the picture should be taken. <laughs> I'll leave the slide up for a second. Uh, but this new architecture finds its core in a domain-based set up with centralized storage architecture, fully powered by Unity Catalog. 
more on that in a bit. But with that, we have a centralized governance between data sharing applications. Let me put that picture and then I'll move to the next one. All right. I quickly want to share this picture as it shows a hypothetical growth. And with that, Atlas can do the scale, right? So does anybody of you heard of a Gen AI? <laughs> I don't see all hands yet, but maybe after this week, then uh, you will. I think it's very common. So our business users did. And the use cases around Gen AI are popping out of the ground like mushrooms. But with Atlas, we're able to serve them and serve them all on one platform. Cool. So what is Atlas? The base of Atlas is an enterprise scale landing zone. In Azure, that's a subscription. And that subscription hosts uh, multiple applications and platform components. I will dive into the components later on. But in it, you see the units. And each unit has its own purpose. It is a dedicated resource group with all specific integrated tools and components. Each unit has its own dedicated network resource group. And with that, every surface in that research group is PLE enabled. And this, from regulatory purposes, is groundbreaking. Because right now, we are able to run Atlas fully privately, functions fully privately within the control of the bank itself. All right. well, I spoiled it already, but I'm going to discuss the four topics in there. So that's ingestion unit, application unit, the orchestration unit, and the storage unit. And let's start with the storage unit, okay? So this is a platform unit, and the logo already gives it away. That's fully powered by Unity Catalog. And for the ones paying attention, you will see that this one is blue. Because throughout the story, the blue part is focusing on the data, and the yellow part is focusing on the tools itself. It means that the storage unit is part of our enterprise data lake. And with that automatically, of course, saying that it's completely governed within Office. The second part is the app unit. And the app unit is the core compute unit for data value creation. The data teams work on this unit, and this is where they create the integrated data sets or their data products. As you can see on the image as well, it, within a domain landing zone, an app unit can be deployed numerous times. Next one is the orchestration unit. And the orchestration unit orchestrates the data pipelines across the data application. In it, you see that we've deployed Apache Airflow as well as AKS for the scalable <laughs> nature and to uh, automate and uh, manage the team's workflow. In the same unit, the monitoring is uh, for on domain level. And last but not least, we also have ingestion unit. And the ingestion unit is for all the data workloads that are not powered by Unity Catalog to come into this system as well. And yeah, orchestrates from that and uh, ingested from that side. Ingestion unit, nice. Okay, cool. Each Atlas platform is the same, right? So we deploy centrally and we manage it centrally. If we change it for one domain, we change it for all of the domains because we do not work for a single workload, we work for the entire bank. And as Stefan mentioned, we have 20 domains. So that's this setup times 20. All right. So now I hear you thinking, how does this differ from any other platform deployment strategy? The answer is the heart of the operation, and that is Unity Catalog. Unity Catalog allows us to access data from the enterprise uh, data lake from, from every location. And Unity Catalog is centrally deployed. We deploy the catalog centrally, and we manage it centrally by a dedicated team. We organize this by having three meta stores. We have a prod, non-prod, and a sandbox metastore. The production metastore hosts all the metadata 
of all the production workspaces. And the non-prod hosts all the metadata of the DTA workspaces. And the setup of environment is for the development of Unity Catalog as well as testing new features. So a little sidestep to how does this also benefit our business users? Imagine being a data analyst working on your code in a separate environment, and you want to operationalize that workload, and you have to contact, get and reach with a data engineer that has to do it for you. But you both work in separate environments. That environment might have a different data model, or might have a different setup, right? So the code has to be scrutinized, have to be changed, have to be rewritten. Time to market can be very demanding. With Unity Catalog and having the data available in the catalogs itself, having access to the data, because that's an important one, and that also is something we can, we can control very granularly. But if you have access to the data, you can pick up the code in one workspace and run it in the other workspace. So that improves the time to market. This is, of course, apart from any code quality, assuming that the data analysts did a good job, right? To top that off, each domain has its own catalog, and this is also the border for them to uh, store and control the data. <coughs> Because the data within a domain, the data access control is managed on domain level. So they're responsible for their own data in their catalog. This minimizes our data movement, and this minimizes our data duplication, meaning that we need less storage and less copying, which automatically reduces the cost of that part. Right. This is a very brief story, so we're going to dive into the questions pretty soon. Because Stephen just shared that the success of a platform starts with organizational changes. Don't try to bring the two worlds together, but start creating it as a whole. I just shared that a unified approach allows us to scale up and make it future-proof <coughs> while still staying in control. Presentation's nice, all right. So we're saying, so let go of what you know and dare to be bold, but start your new paradigm shift today. For the people that are wondering, what I concluded with my wife, we watched Gossip Girl and we ate a salad. Thank you.